Good afternoon. I wanted to share very briefly a book that I'm very excited to read. Um, I got this beautiful uh, two set, two book set from Banner of Truth. It's called The Calvinistic Methodist Fathers of Wales. Pretty thick. Um, you might be wondering, Daniel, why on earth would you be excited to read a book um, as random and as, as obscure as the Calvinistic Methodist Fathers of Wales? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Um, for one, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones um, is one of my favorite uh, preachers, uh, one of the best preachers of the 20th century, and he benefited largely from this tradition from reading the lives of Howell Harris, Daniel Rowland, and many of the other uh, founders of Wales. He says on the back of this, he says, go to the 18th century. This is Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. He says, in other words, read the stories of the great tides and movements of the spirit experienced in that century. It is the most exhilarating experience, the finest tonic you will ever know for a preacher it is absolutely invaluable. There's nothing more important for preaching than the reading of church history and biographies. End quote. So that is Lloyd-Jones kind of speaking in his dramatic um, way, but there's truth to that. And I don't think you need to necessarily be a preacher to benefit from church history or Christian biographies. I think this is can be tonic to any Christian to, to learn and contemplate how God had moved in previous times, previous places, how God moved in the Reformation, how God moved in England, how God moved in uh, America in the, in the 18th century, and, and how God moved in a place like Wales. Uh, so very interesting. So this spans, I think, from seven, the, the 1700s to the mid-1800s. And I think there are, there are two reasons why I'm why I am particularly excited to, to learn about these guys. And the first is, the opening chapter of this book talks about the moral condition of Wales before Methodism. Now, Methodism is the kind of religious movement that started with Wesley and those types. And they, they kind of branched from the English and the Welsh traditions. But prior to revival, Wales was bad. There was sexual promiscuity. There was drunkenness. There's all manner of um, profligacy. Almost, you see the pendulum swing from the Puritanism of the 17th century and the very strict, kind of dour um, religion to the other extreme, which is just complete license. Things are bad. And that is the environment that. Revival happens. That is the environment that God uh, brings up men to preach mightily and to change the landscape, the spiritual landscape of an entire country. That should be cause for hope because, if you didn't know, our own times aren't doing that great. If you watch the news, if you see the trends, if you see what is being promoted about human sexuality, human gender, um, the idea of self we are in dark times ourselves, but the hope is that as we see how God has worked in dark times in the past, we realize that our own times aren't that unique. They're unique. They're a little different. There's some different dynamics going on, but they're not that unique. Okay? There's been dark times. There's been darker times than we are in in the past. The second reason I'm pretty interested in learning about these guys is that they're Calvinistic, Okay, which is they have a Calvinistic soteriology. They have an understanding of God's uh, sovereignty and God's drawing and salvation. Um, but they also are very much reliant on the Holy Spirit and the Spirit's role in preaching, the, the Spirit giving unction. They had this um, necessity for the Holy Spirit to move and work with power. So what is interesting to me about that is there's it's often that you see either one extreme or you see the other, right? You see 
pure doctrine. You go to a church where they're teaching good stuff. It's very well founded. It's scriptural, but it is dry. It is boring. There's no life. And then you go to other churches where things are amped and the preacher is uh, is is full of fire and he's he's dynamic, but there's really no substance to what he's saying. It's not grounded in any truth. Well, these guys, and they're not perfect, the, these founders. I'm sure they had flaws and maybe even theological issues. But what's unique about the movement is that there was robust doctrine and there was a total reliance on the Holy Spirit. And we kind of see both of those things happening. And I believe that's very important if we want to see a revival in our own day in the West. Um, spirit and truth. So I'm excited to keep to keep reading. I'm on. I'm learning about Daniel Rowland now, and it's very encouraging, very exciting to see um, how God worked in his life, how God used him as a preacher, and preaching the law, preaching threatenings, and people would cry, people would break. Uh, it was very dramatic, and but God used men like that um, in powerful ways. So maybe I'll keep you posted on some updates of some things I'm learning, um, but hang in there. And take care.